Hey, this is Bill Kane from Kane Images Photographic Workshops. Today, what I want to show you folks is how to watermark your photos using iWatermark Pro. And first thing I'm gonna do is start it up. iWatermark Pro, starting up now. There's a bunch of different features on here. The first part of iWatermark is the main section. So the main section includes number one, input files and folders. That's where you choose your images to be water watermarked. So you choose your images to be watermarked there. So basically you're gonna choose the images uh, and I've already done that here. I've chosen the folders that I'm going to use. I'm gonna drag those folders into the dialog box here. Input files and folders, there's 47 images to be watermarked. I can actually get rid of this. And now go to processing tasks. Uh, you wanna choose the watermark you're going to use. I've already added the watermark I'm going to use. It's the one all the way down the bottom here. And if you need to edit that or add it, you can either you can add a watermark by just clicking the plus sign in your watermark manager. Um, type in text. Let's see what this. Ooh, shoot. Type in text. Let's see what it shows up as. Save. It'll show up all that. Well, it'll show up really big. You can resize it by dragging. At least you should be able to resize it. Yeah clicking on one of the white boxes, resize it, move it anywhere you want on the screen or on the image actually. I'm not gonna do that for this though. I'm not gonna save this because I already have my stuff figured out. It's already set up. So my watermark that I'm, or the watermark that I've chosen or I'm going to use already is this one here. And I'll show you what it is. <laughs> it's just a watermark, copyright 2014 Kane images and you can tweak it, you can do some effects to it. I don't really want to do that here. You can add a shadow, engraved, outline text. I'm not gonna do any of that for this one because I don't want to. Background, you can change the background color, border color, border thickness. I don't want to do that for this either. Shadow, I can drop a shadow in there, which I don't need to do. I don't want to do that for this at the moment. And remember, all this is is a graphic image saved as a PNG file. Uh, so just click on graphic, pop it in there, save it, and you're good to go. So then you go back to opacity, change the opacity levels. I usually keep it at about 48%. I don't want it to go over top of the image too much. <clears throat> so I clicked OK for that. You can change the rotation. I'm not going to do that for this. You can change the scale, sliding scale. And generally for a horizontal image, I keep it at 33%. So let's see, let me type 33% in there. Good, 33%, that's where it was. Actually, maybe I'll make this a little larger. No, that's too big, 33%, leave it there. Location, you can automatically move it to wherever you need to go. I choose to keep it on the bottom left for these images. And the reason I watermark this stuff is because I'm gonna put it on Facebook and I don't want some chooch or some idiot taking my imagery and running with it and claiming it as their own, which is never fun. So that's all set. So the next thing I need to do is choose an output folder. And for this, it's only going to Facebook. So what I need to do is create an output folder. So I'm gonna make a folder here, uh, new, new folder. And I'm just gonna name it Facebook. And I'm gonna to use today's date, which is October 2nd, 2014. Hit return, good to go. So the images are gonna go into this folder. So what I need to do is set that location. So I need to drag the folder here into this box, the output to box. And that's pretty much it. Ready to process the images. I can actually click on, click on the image to get an idea how it's gonna look when it's done. I can actually scroll through each image by hitting, hitting the arrow key. I can scroll through each image and see how it's gonna come out when we go back to that. See now there, the vertical image is gonna come up a little bit smaller, so what I'll probably wind up doing is going back and resizing the vertical images, or the, the watermark on the vertical images to be a little bit larger, maybe 50%. But let me see what it looks like when I finish. And so I'm ready, so I'm ready to go with the watermarking process. Uh, there's other options up here when you're using iWatermark Pro. Uh, I was on the, I'm on the main section or main dialog box, there's filtering, <coughs> F 
filter image attributes, which I tend not to even bother with. Add keywords. Resizing. You can resize the image. Actually, I do have that checked off. It's resizing because it's going on Facebook or going on Facebook. I only want to have it about 12,000 pixels wide and at 72 dots per inch. I want it pretty small in there. I don't want it very large. Again, so people don't take the image and use it as their own. I don't want to put out a high res image there that's not watermarked. So there's that option. There's presets set up for iPhone, iPhone 5S, picture book, power book, set it for each resolution for each screen if you want to do that. But I'm set up for other now because it's 1280 by 1280 in height and weight or height and weight, no, width and height, sorry. You can also rename your images if you like when you export them. That way you don't run into duplicates or in some cases right over top of your other images. You can change the size of your, th create thumbnails of images. You can do that as well. Choose the size. I'm not going to do that for this. IPTC information or XMP information, you can add that, enable that. There's an advanced section for more advanced stuff, but right now I just want to get this stuff watermarked so I can put it up on Facebook and have the world look at it and tell me they love it or they hate it. So right now I'm going to hit start processing. It's going to go, the images that I save are going to go right into the Facebook folder I just created. Boom, it's working. See here, one, two, three, four, done, 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 complete. So they're complete. So now I'm just waiting for the other ones to complete. And then from there, what I'm going to do is go into Adobe Bridge. I'm going to take this folder and drop it in Adobe Bridge and see which images I need to resize or re-watermark. If it's really necessary. I don't know that it is. I might just choose to do those images at another time. Sometimes it takes a while because it's resizing as well as watermarking your images. So it might take some time to actually accomplish the task that you're looking to accomplish, especially when you dump 47 images into the folder, which I probably should have only done about 10. Probably should have chilled and not done as many. But I'm gonna have to go back and resize those pictures, so. But right now I just wanna get you guys acclimated to iWatermark Pro and it's almost done and then i'll show you how it looks in a second three two one zero okay finished processing generated resized watermark images total time was 76 seconds how about that so i'm going to go into adobe bridge boom Any day you want to open up, Bridge. There you go. Okay, so let's enlarge that. Here's the images. Watermark down the bottom left. Bottom, bottom left, bottom left. Come on. Load. Let's go. There you go. Watermarked images, 1280 wide. So this will do the trick for now. The only issue is going to be this size, so I have to go back in afterwards and redo the vertical ones at 50%, so it'll take up a good portion of the bottom of the frame, about as much space as in the horizontals. So horizontals are looking good, the verticals, eh, not so much, so I need to redo them. But I will do that another time. For this, I'm not going to worry about it. I just wanted to see you guys get going with this stuff and uh, have fun with it. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is Bill Kane, Kane Images Photographic Workshops. Have a good day.